Today, I want to talk a little bit about a common mistake that I, I often see in students that uh, they have a seat that's too static or too heavy, so they have too much weight on their seat bones. And I, I want to demonstrate a little bit uh, why that is an issue and what you can do to, to fix that problem. My name is Thomas Ritter. My wife, Shannon, and I teach riders how to train their horses themselves. So if you find this information useful, then hit like and subscribe, turn the notifications on so you get a message every time we put out a new video and comment below. You can let us know if there are other topics that you would be interested in that you want us to cover. Yeah, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the seed. Um, and mis some misconceptions that are very common. Um, there are people always hear that they should sit still and you know you shouldn't see any movement and so on. And uh, th then they become stiff because they're trying not to move and then they actually end up bouncing in the saddle or their legs get noisy, their hands get noisy. Um, and the, the truth is that a seat that appears quiet is actually very dynamic, it's very mobile. The, uh, the rider moves a lot. Every joint in the body moves a little with the horse. And uh, it's really interesting to experiment a little bit with uh, your weight distribution and with uh, how you accompany the movement of the horses back. Because, you know, there are up and down movements, there are left and right movements, there are forward and back movements, especially in the walk and the canter. Um, in the trot, the up and down movement dominates. Um, the rib cage swings a little left and right, um, always uh, towards the side where the hind leg is on the ground and away from the side where the hind leg is in the air. And if you enhance movements, like if I swing a little to the outside, um, I can get a better bend sometimes, or I could get more engagement of the inside hind leg, then inside pole might relax a little bit. Whereas if the belly hangs to the inside, then they're usually heavy on the inside rein and they get st you know, stiff in the, in the pole. Um, weight distribution plays a big role too. A lot of people think that you have to have all your weight on your seat bones. But if I do that, if I sit with my whole weight on my seat bones, and especially if the legs go out in front, I, it kills the back movement of the horse and it kills the hind leg movement. That's why he stopped. So if I want him to keep moving, if I want him to use his back, I have to lighten my seat sometimes a little bit and make a little room for the back to come up. I can drive a little at that moment. And then when I feel like the hind leg has caught up, I can also emphasize the downward movement a little bit to flex that hind leg a little so I can sit into the horse a little bit. And you see it changes the way the horse moves. So if I spread my weight more into my thighs and knees, yeah, I can, it's like now I'm lifting a little bit. So I make room for his back. And then when the hind legs step down underneath me, I can sit down into the hind leg a little bit. So you accompany the movement of the back, you emphasize different aspects of the stride, and then uh, you can shape the movement and the balance of the horse with your seat by doing that. So then you, you'll probably see it even more in the trot. So we'll give that a try. So I always like to lighten a little bit at first, swing up a little bit, and then I can settle down a little bit into the back. And then I could swing up a little bit, that makes the trot a little livelier too. And then I can sit and then I have to watch that he doesn't slow down too much so that he doesn't lose impulsion, right? So I can be dynamic with my seat. I can emphasize the up, up, up movement. And I can emphasize the down, 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 right? And you could do this uh, in time with a specific hind leg, right? So you could Lighten the seat when, like, now, now, now is the outside hind in the air. And now, 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 outside hind is on the ground. And uh, so my horse walked because I emphasized the downward motion. And I, I made myself a little heavier uh, when the left hind leg was on the ground. <laughs> yeah. 
So of course you can do the same thing with the inside hind leg too, right? So you could um, choose a hind leg to work to work on, right? So by lightening the seat when it's in the air, you uh, allow it to engage a little more, and you engage, uh, allow the back to lift. And when you emphasize the downward motion, you sit down. When that hind leg is on the ground, you flex it a little bit. So uh, <laughs> without any fancy arena patterns or without any advanced movements, you could already exercise or you know, gymnasticize a, a particular hind leg. Now, now, now the inside hind is in the air. And now, 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 it's on the ground. He almost walked, right? So if I make myself heavier, he walked. So it's not necessarily the prettiest down transition if you just make yourself heavy, but the horse goes from, from trot to walk, right? So you could shape this a little bit more. Um, but you, you can see how powerful the, the seat and the weight is. So, so now, now, now the outside hind was in the air and now, now, now it's on the ground. So now use that for a down transition then. <laughs> so let me go back to trot. And if I go into more of a chair seat, you know, then you can see how he gets lower in front and it kills the trot, right? Poor horse. <laughs> so, and uh, it kills the movement of the hind legs. It kills the movement of the back. But if I want him to stay in the trot, I have to emphasize the upswing periodically. I cannot be heavy and uh, sitting on my seat bones all the time. So I can give a little on the inside rein here. And uh, test so, you know, how well he carries himself. So, and there, I wanted a little bit more roundness in the pole, so I sat a little more on that left inside seat bone and let him feel the outside rein a little bit. So, and then if I go passive, he walks, right? I didn't do anything, no rein aid, uh, just let myself sink more. And uh, that killed the, <laughs> the trot, so to speak, right? So it gave me a down transition to the, to the walk. Yeah, so in other words, with your pelvis and your seat and your weight distribution, you can uh, shape the horse's balance, you can shape the gait um, a, great, a great deal. Um, so use it consciously, experiment a little bit with your horse to see um, how you need to sit or move in order for him to lift his back more, swing more, how you need to sit in order to flex a hind leg more. Um, and you'll find that uh, it will vary a little bit depending on the training stage and, and how he feels that day and whether it's early in the ride, later in the ride. So he may have to sit differently once he's warmed up than in the beginning. Um, with some horses, you have to be pretty light in your seat in the beginning, and then you can settle in more as they warm up. Try to feel what the horse needs to be able to move optimally with the least wear and tear and with the least waste of, of energy on his part. And uh, yeah, so the horse will, will actually show you how he wants to be ridden. If you play with that and see um, does he get better or does he get worse when I do something, when I lighten the seat or when I sit into him more? And uh, so it becomes a really interesting dialogue with, with your horse, where the horse is your teacher and then you try to you know, figure out how you, know, you need to sit and use your seat in order to make him comfortable underneath you and in order to, <laughs> in order to get him to uh, yeah, move in balance and use this back properly. So if you have any questions, you can comment below. If you found it interesting, click like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.